Good morning, everyone. It is so good to be with you. I am Janie Seltzer, and you can see Mr. Rue Bear. Hey, Rue, really, say hi to everyone. He's right here beside me with his baby, and we are here in the Sacred Garden of Hidden Life Ministries, where I'm the spiritual director. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Jane, and those of you who are watching with them. It is such hmm, a beautiful day, and I want you to have a beautiful day. Good morning, I see um, Atelier, and I see Sue Edwards. Hi, Sue and Liz. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Marvin. Good to see you again. Hi, Connie. Hi, Jean, and those of you who are watching with them. It is, hi Sarah, Montreal, wow, amazing. Abdullah, good morning, good morning. Thank you, so I want to talk with you today about the mysterious joy that Christ gives. Now, I make no bones about the fact that my master and my Lord is Jesus. And I invite you into this space, whether he's yours or not, but you can learn and perhaps um, maybe even be um, a desirous of learning more about who Jesus is and what he does in our lives. And I, um, as the spiritual director also of the Zig Ziglar community around the world, I can freely talk about Jesus because Mr. Ziglar was a Christ follower. So let me begin. And hi, Andrea. And I see, um, I see Emily, Emil, rather, Emil. Good morning. And hi, Wade and, and Linda and Desire. Good morning from Juana. Good morning. Hi, Julian from Kenya. Amazing. And um, Chimney and John and Justin and others who are watching and Stella, Nigeria. Yes, do tell me where you all live. Priya, hello, good morning. Rick and Vikas, good morning. Hi from Lebanon. Wow, beautiful country. Nigeria and I see um, a whole group of you. I don't know where you're from. And Diego from Colombia and Anwar. Good morning. Blessings to all of you. And there's Stuart. I think it was Stuart from Brazil. Wow. So we are, oh, we are worldwide. We are a community that get to sit around the fire of the love of God. That's all I have to give you. And it is enough. I give you the love of Christ because he loves on me so that I can love on you. He comforts me so that he can comfort you. He strengthens me so that I may be privileged to perhaps help strengthen you. And with that, I want to begin with a poem and then a prayer, and then I'm going to show you what totally caught my joy this morning and I uh, want to tell you all about that. But let me begin with this poem that is hot off the fire of the oven of my own soul as of yesterday. I've been pondering the mysterious joy of Christ. Now, let me read it and then we'll talk more about it. Divine joy known only to his lovers and friends. A kingdom reward reigns in secret, even in sorrow, poverty, pain, joy flows divine, unconquerable, quiet, as a river flows steady from God's throne, makes glad the soul, exquisite thrill of sacred delight. Hmm. Lord God, I thank you that you invite us into your sacred delight. Not just at this moment, but every day. You put out your hand and you say, follow me. Hmm. I will give you joy that is mysterious, 
that will fill you to the brim, that will never go away. Thank you, Jesus, that you gave to us your joy. Hmm. I pray for my friends around the world, Lord. I pray that you would wrap your loving, warm arms around them. Come Holy Spirit and encourage and strengthen and love on your people for they need you as I need you. Give them your strength, Holy Father, by the power of your spirit. Give them your joy, give them your peace and help them to walk in purity with you. For you are divine. You are the only begotten Son of God who lived to serve, to live, who lived to give, who lived in the purity of the Holy Spirit. And I pray for the everyone listening that you would forgive them and forgive me of all of my sins. May we run to you as children, aware that we fall short of your own glory, aware that we need your cleansing. So cleanse us, Holy Spirit, so that we might be white as snow. Cleanse us so that we might know you better, deeper, wider, hmm, as you call us into your presence. Holy Father, you know the needs of everyone listening. Some are struggling with poverty. Oh, Lord God, pour out your riches from your throne. Some are struggling with sickness. Oh, Father, pour out your healing from your throne. Some are struggling with depression and anxiety. Oh, Holy Father, pour out your joy from your holy throne. Holy Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord Most High. I pray with deep gratitude in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hmm. Amen. Amen. So, I want, I'll say hello to a few of you that are uh, weighing in. Always remember to tell me where you're from. Hello, Kevin and Philippe. Good to see you. I am so delighted to be able to share with you what I've been studying in Scripture and what God has been um, developing and enlarging and creatively um, showing me by his spirit. You know, God is the creator and he desires to make you creators wherever you are. You can be in collaboration with the Lord God Almighty. A matter of fact, this entire garden, which you can only see a part of it right now. By the way, I want to show you, let's see if I can do this, up on the top of the hill. Hmm. is a fountain flowing. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I don't want to lose you, so I'm going to I'm going not going to be too concerned. There's a fountain flowing at the top of the hill because there are cars just beyond that, and the fountain reminds me and all of those who come here to listen for the deeper, quieter sounds that are around if we pay attention. So, divine joy, the mysterious joy that God gives, that Christ gives. Now, as I thought about Jesus, you know, no one, and I checked this because I thought it was true and I wanted to make sure, no one, none of the gospel writers ever mentioned that he's smiling. Hmm. They never mentioned that he's laughing. So what is it that made him so desirable and so deeply um, oh, inviting. What was it? If we, was he walking around with a big smile on his face? Um, I wanted to understand that. And so I delved in 
and found that I knew there was one place in scripture that talks about his joy, but I didn't know that there were two times that Jesus wants to share his joy with us. Are you with me? Give me a thumbs up if you're with me. And um, I see you there and I know that you are. So those two places are both found in the Gospel of John. If you have a Bible, um, please turn to, um, you can put up your finger in one place and then turn to the other. I see your thumbs coming up. Thank you so much for letting me know you're with me. Okay, first we're gonna look at John 15 and then we're gonna look at John 17. And we're only gonna actually look at one verse in each of those places. The first place is in John 15, 11. You might wanna write that down. And the second one is John 17, 13. Write that down. Okay, so here we go. Listen up, get your ears perked to hear. Jesus said, and John 15, by the way, is that beautiful chapter that talks about the vine and the branches, and he tells us to remain in him. Okay, now you can read that on your own, but I want you to turn your eyes and attention to John 15, 11. Jesus said, these things I have spoken to you, and he's talking to his disciples, that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Hmm. So when Jesus said that, if he had not been an exhibitor of joy, then the disciples would have said, what joy? We don't see any joy. Do you see any rebuttals from the disciples? Not at all. So I dove in and I discovered that the word joy there in John 15, 11 is, is the word hara in Greek. And it means gladness. It means joyfulness. And it means, listen up, calm, delight. Hmm. Now, of the three, I like them all. They're all good. And sometimes I feel such joy that I can hardly contain it. And sometimes I feel simply glad. But then most of the time, I feel calm delight. And I believe that that's what Jesus exhibited to his disciples, calm delight. That's the joy he was talking about. What I love about that is calm delight. Doesn't mean that we're jumping up and down like on, as on a trampoline, like hooting and hollering and laughing and making jokes. That's not the kind. This is a mysterious joy that is sacred. It's calm. It's delight that is inner. It's delight that fills up to the brim. How do I know that? I'm gonna tell you in a minute. And it's also delight that is forever. So it's nothing like what we see that the world would call joy. That's happiness. And I'm a happy person, but not always. Life is not happy right now. I tend to souls who are very sad and it, I share their grief. I sit in other people's pain and I've had plenty of my own and that makes me feel sad. But underneath all of that, something that I can't touch or find but is real is a calm delight and that calm delight sustains me even when things are sad and sorrowful and death prowls around hmm that's a good thing to discover isn't it now when Jesus said 
these things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you. I looked that word up in the Greek and it means not to depart. He's giving us a joy that will not depart. It never says bye-bye. <laughs> it endures. Now, let's go a little deeper as we move forward into John chapter 17. John chapter 17 is often called the high priestly prayer of Jesus. I'd like for you to read it um, when you have time. It begins with something very interesting. This is right before his crucifixion. And he said, the time has come, Father. Hmm. And he goes into the most incredible intercession, intimate intercession between his own soul and Abba Father's soul that you can find in scripture. It is rich, it is beautiful, and I will keep coming back to it from time to time. But at verse 13, Jesus says this, I am coming to you now. Speaking of Abba Father, Holy Father, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they, meaning those chosen, hmm, beloved by Abba Daddy. So let me say that again. I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. Wow. Okay. This is almost identical to what he said in John 15, except in John 15 he spoke of this joy remaining, never departing. Now in John 17 he speaks of the full measure of his joy. Same word, hara, in Greek. However, he's speaking of the full measure. Okay, that makes my soul, you know, when I'm really, really joyful, instead of wanting to jump up and down, I just, I just almost um, want to hide. I'm, I'm so overwhelmed that I just get quiet. Hmm. He is saying to Abba Father to give his children, his beloved ones, the full measure of his own joy. Wow. When I looked that word up in the Greek, it is a word play ra'o, play ra'o. Um, I wonder, I didn't find this out, but I almost wonder if that's where we get our word pleasure. Play off, play ra'o, play ra'o. I don't know, but I know this in the Greek. It means full to the brim. Hmm. How would you like to have a mysterious joy that makes you full to the brim. That's amazing. That's astonishing. That takes my breath away and it explains why I feel this, I feel this fullness of joy even when on the surface I may not be happy. It also means to carry through to the end. So it's very similar to that word remain, except it also means full to the brim. Amazing. Now, if that's not a quality of joy that is mysterious, I don't know what is. 
It's truly one of the secrets of the kingdom of God. I'm not in the secret shelter right now, but it could, this message could also be spoken there because it is truly one of the secrets of the kingdom. Wow, wow. So, to sum it all up, these five things came to me regarding this mysterious joy that Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God, Savior of the entire universe, gives to his beloved. The joy that Jesus gives is unique and sacred. That's number one. The joy that Jesus gives keeps on coming. The joy that Jesus gives is calm delight. The joy that Jesus gives fills to the brim. And last, the joy that Jesus gives strengthens soul. Nehemiah 8.10 When the wall was being rebuilt, Nehemiah said, in spite of all the obstacles and all the scorners, he said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. So those five things are, and I'm sure there's much more, but those are the five things that I pinpointed about this mysterious joy that Jesus gives. It is unique and sacred. It keeps on coming. It gives calm, delight. It fills you to the brim and it strengthens soul. Would you like that joy? As I was thinking about you, my friends, of what state your soul might be in, you know, my whole stick is nourish soul and live whole. I want you to live whole. And I'm wondering if you don't have the joy that Jesus gives, three things might be possible. First of all, perhaps you never really understood who Jesus is and you haven't received him as your Lord and your master, I invite you to do that now. It's not complicated. Take his hand. Let him love you and heal you and forgive you. Just say, Jesus, I need you. I want you. Come, Lord Jesus, to my life and fill my soul with your Holy Spirit, forgiving and cleansing me of all my sins. You don't have to remember all those words. He knows what you're feeling, what you're needing, what you're thinking. Simply receive his invitation. That might be the first reason you're not experiencing this mysterious joy. The second reason you might not be experiencing this mysterious joy is that you got off the track. You may be like Pastor Don and I on Sunday talked about in the parable of the lost coin and the lost sheep. You may have been in the flock, but you wandered off. And friends, it's not a joyful place. I don't care where you are or what you're doing and you think it's bringing you temporary joy but that's the problem it's just temporary and you're caught in a bamboo bush <laughs> you're caught at the edge of a cliff and you need your Savior to come find you and oh by the way twice in those two parables it says that when Jesus goes after him, one of his lost coins or lost lambs, that the very angels in heaven rejoice. So don't you want to bring not only God joy, but also your own soul joy by saying, help, 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 Lord Jesus. 
I am lost. Please come and rescue me. I need you. The enemy caught my attention. Have mercy on me, holy, holy Father. Send forth Jesus, the good shepherd, to bring me home. Trust me, friends. He will come and fetch you. Yes, he will. And the third reason that perhaps you have not, or rather you are not experiencing this mysterious joy is that you're in the flock, but you don't daily speak gratitude to Abba Father. Gratitude is the beginning of joy. You forget how much you have to be thankful for. Gratitude precedes joy. And so you're looking around, you're in the flock, you see the shepherd, but you're focused on all the negative stuff going on in the world. I know there's lots of it, but you know what? You're powerless to do anything about it if you're not experiencing joy. So begin with gratitude, as Pastor Don said last Sunday. And you know, you can listen to that message if you go to YouTube, to Janie Poet, and you can hear it. Now, let me conclude today with the poem again. And I encourage you right now to close your eyes, open your palms, and just receive these words. Divine joy, known only to his lovers and friends. A kingdom reward reigns in secret, even in sorrow, poverty, pain. Joy flows divine unconquerable, quiet, as a river flows, steady from God's throne, makes glad the soul, exquisite thrill of sacred delight. Thank you, Abba, Holy Father, for the exquisite thrill, the sacred delight you give. Hmm. Flood, my friends, with that quality of mystery that they can find no place else but from you. Fill them, flood them, love them, Bring them close to your heart, I pray, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, thank you for joining me, for bringing your friends into the loop to watch parties and such. I pray that you will share this teaching on your Facebook page and wherever you do social media so that others can know the mysterious joy that Jesus gives. Now, all glory to him who is able to keep us from falling away and who will bring us with great joy into his glorious presence. All glory to him who alone is God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. All glory, power, authority, and dominion belong to him who is before all time, is in the present, and is forevermore. All glory to God. Until next time, I hope to see you Sunday morning with Pastor Don, 8 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. In the meantime, stay close to Jesus. He will fill you, flood you, and love you like no other. Goodbye, friends.